Hello, my friends, my lovers, my buddies, my pals. My name is Andrew Watt Culture. I appreciate you joining me today in this right. Another seven days has passed, so it's time to take the finger of power and get the good bits up and the bad bits are down for AEW Rampage. If you can believe it, I have been doing this for six years. Somebody dig my grave. What? No, up those tabs. <laughs> me a bit of Rampage, especially when it just starts with a smack bam wallop and it gives you a pretty damn good match. Therefore, we did indeed have FTR versus Top Flight for the Ring of Honor tag team titles and it was so nice to see Top Flight in a tag team match again because of course Darius Martin has been injured for ages but now he and Dante are back and they're just so flipping good. And I mean that literally, honestly, even if you only have five minutes to take. Go and watch the first five minutes of this. They're just pinging around like a ping pong. But as soon as they were in there with Cash, they booted him right in the face and they sent him off against the ropes. And then they did this double leapfrog thing. And then when he came back, they kind of kicked him and they hit him with a DDT. And it was just so effortlessly good. Dax is far more simple. So eventually he just tackled Darius before he punched him right in the face. But then they started to have a chop battle. So Darius thought, I'm going to hit you with a sunset flip. And when it didn't work, Dante did a springboard meteora to take everybody out. And once again, I just look at them like this because I don't know how they do it and I don't know how they make it so damn smooth. Like butter. He also did stereo hurricane runners and a double dive because it is wrestling 2022 and you need to keep up with that modern day. And the problem was, eventually Harwood got bored of this. So he hit this slingshot power bomb, which was totally devastating when Cash came off the top with a big splash. I know he's done this before, but it just hit me harder today. I'm like, now everybody is doing splashes? What the flub is going on? FTR were clearly confident because they went for the big ring, but Darius was able to stop that when Dante hit this flippy dippy doodah pin, which I watched twice and still can't figure it out. Then it was just DDT, a frog splash, an uppercut, a Spanish fly. There was a brain buster in there as well, and it was just great pure wrestling tennis. And I was on everybody's side. I mean it. When Top Flight were in charge, I was like, you go get them. And when FTR were winning, I was like, you get them too. Just too damn good. It left Dante trying to pin Dax over and over again, but he couldn't do it. So this was like trying to plug in a USB the right way. And sadly, that's when things went bad because Dante went for the nose dive. Dax had this scouted. He got him up for the big rig. They were able to score with their finishing move and they pinned them for the one, two, three. But honestly, believe in your Unky Simon. You have to go and watch this match because it's just everything that makes wrestling so damn good merged into one with two completely different styles, but it still worked. Give it up. The Gun Club also came out afterwards to basically laugh at FTR. I was like, what are you doing? They just won. That doesn't make any sense. Although I like Colton and Austin. I think they're very entertaining. Although in this feud, which we have been teasing for a while, they may be killed. Got this really cool video for Powerhouse Will Hobbs after this. And I really hope it means he's going to get a massive push. Because by the end of it, I was like, hot damn, that guy's pretty cool. When out came the Jericho Appreciation Society. I assume to appreciate Chris Jericho. The Ocho felt like he'd now been through every single Ring of Honor competitor there was, so he's pretty much done with all of this, especially because he's the greatest ROH champion in history. When out came Claudio Castagnoli. Now, yes, I get what people are saying. They're like, well, if this was the plan, why did Claudio lose at the pay-per-view? Well, you can actually counteract that by saying that Claudio beat Jericho in that tag team match. So actually they have achieved parity. So why not have another match at final battle? though it's not the final one. What really made this work though is that we had stipulations because Jericho was all like, I'm not fighting you again. Who the hell do you think I am? When Daddy Magic got the mic and said, well, actually, if you do want to do it, how about we do this? Obviously, if Castagnoli wins, he can be the new champ. But if you win, Christopher Jericho, Claudio Castagnoli, who did sports entertain for a long old while, has to join the JAS. Pretty sure after that I heard dun, 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 but that is absolutely perfect. And Chris should win this, and Claudio should have to join this group because there's loads you can do with it, and it ties into the fact that the Black Bull Combat Club are crumbling at the seams. I mean, you may as well break that up. Everybody in this also played their role so well, and at one point Jericho said that his nipples went hard after Matt Menyard <laughs> made his suggestion. So I was like, yep, this is the wrestling I want. Goofy wrestling for life, giving it up. Quick interview with Tony Storm, courtesy of Renee Paquette after this. And Tony had like these two black eyes. So after Rene was like, well, what are you going to do now that Jamie Hayter has take your title? Tony basically said, well, I broke my face losing the belt. 
So I'm gonna break my face winning it back. And I was like, yeah, that is a kind of cool line. Also, it doesn't really actually make any sense. She will be fine though, because Tony Storm is so damn good. I mean, ever since she's been in AEW, it's just been banger after banger after banger. It was random rampage time next, the RRT, because we had Darby Allen versus Anthony Henry. I mean, why not? You do need to be a big fan of Dark and Elevation to know what Anthony Henry has been up to recently, although the commentators did a great job here because they were like, look, one day AEW didn't exist, and Darby Allen and Henry have a massive history, so we were planting those seeds. Allen also decided to take out JD Drake, who had come out with his buddy Anthony early on. But that was a terrible idea because they just grabbed him and they threw Allen into Barry Barricade. And I swear, every time he has a match, he's going into Barry Barricade and it's no good for Darby Allen and it's no good for Baza. Do you think he wants to get hurt? Of course not. He's just trying to keep the fans back. Before long, Darby was hanging upside down in the ropes because he is just a human puppet and holy crap, he got slammed with this hangman's neck breaker thing and it looked absolutely terrifying. And yet because he is Darby Allen, somehow he still came back with this code red. I mean, he is like the greatest underdog fighter ever. They eventually crawled to the floor, which is where Drake was getting involved again. So Sting, who obviously had come out with his son, was like, no, that's not going to happen. So you know what he did? He grabbed him and he threw him into Barry Barricade. I was like, man, somebody needs to send poor Mr. Barricade a letter or at least double his pay. Sadly, none of this helped Darby because he then got superplexed. And I was like, man, somebody needs to help this guy. But actually, Henry made a mistake because he was like, well, wait, one suplex worked. Why don't I do another one? It was a terrible idea because Darby turned it into the Scorpion Death Drop. The gibberish that was. The Scorpion Death Drop, which I did appreciate. He hit the Coffin Drop. He got the one, two, three. Everybody went, yeah. And this was just a fun little match on Rampage. If you did get mad of it, you probably got a problem. I'm giving it up. Next thing there was then chatting to Athena, who has recently suffered a suspension. Oh, no. Now, this is, of course, because she attacked referee Aubrey Edwards last week. But honestly, Athena was great here. She has gone super duper heel. She went absolutely nuts. She chased Lexi away. And then she said, Mercedes Martinez, I want to fight you for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. And we should do that match. And Athena should win. She really took her few minutes and made them count to the point. I'm going to give it up. I don't really ever do that because, you know, I like to make sure everything is balanced out. But yeah, she's onto something with this. So she's getting it up. Sheeda then beat Queen Aminata in one minute. I still don't really understand what happened here. Now, Sheena is awesome, and Aminata obviously has a massive upside. But early on, Penelope Ford and the Bunny came out. They just watched, and they didn't do anything. So Sheena hit the Falcon Arrow. She hit the big knee, and she got the one, two, three. And honestly, this whole thing was over and done with in around about two minutes. So I guess we could be building to some kind of tag team feud where it is going to be the Bunny and Ford taking on Sheeta and another partner, maybe even the Queen. But I sometimes think that Rampage just tries to pack in too much. This didn't really help anyone, and I would imagine it just left a lot of people confused. Or it left me confused. And it's always good to feature as many people as you can on TV, but you also need to give them a bit of substance. I think it's got to get it down. Amazingly, Dax Harwood then challenged Brian Danielson to a match on Dynamite. I was like, where did that come from? And even if it does make no sense, I do not care. Because do you know how good that is going to be? Let me just run the numbers. Give me a second. Here it is. Very good. It also means that we're getting in five days, which is something I need in my existence. And then we got to our main event. And man, I am just giving a massive round of applause. This is the kind of stuff that Rampage needed. Emotion up the 2-9. Because it was Roos, the Butcher, and the Blade. And I hope they had some good Black Friday deals at their shop taking on the Dark Order. John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Ten. And yet Ten was nowhere to be seen. Now, of course, this ties into the last few weeks where something does seem to be wrong with the man. And good grief did we find out the truth. It did mean that our good guys were down 3-2. to two, So Alex Reynolds and John Silver like, were going to have to run wild here. And they did do that for a little bit before the numbers game overwhelmed them. Because of course it did. How the hell were they going to beat three guys? Especially when one was the butcher. He was just grabbing people and throwing them into whatever he could find. He's really good. Things then did get super emotional though because Negative One and Evil Una were saying, Ten, Ten, you got to come to the ring. Which he did do. And he got in the squared circle. And he kind of got in Rush's face. And just when it looked like he was going to hit him, he turned around and hit the discus lariat onto John Silver. 
And that's right, that was Brody Lee's move. They actually went, no, like I was Darth Vader, but it actually got me. And this is when Evil Uno tried to get involved with the Butcher and the Blade took him out. When Rush hit the bull horns onto Silver and just pinned him for the one, two, three. And then all of these guys, as well as 10, just caused a bunch of carnage. I mean, they even ripped off Uno's mask. The only good thing about that is that he too is a bored a-hole. Welcome to the club. Reynolds also got it too because he got thrown through Timmy the timekeeper's table. So this was like the flipping Beatles breaking up. And the absolute bit that will break your heart is that when 10 got to the top of the aisleway and poor negative one was like, why did you do this? He took off his mask that was given to him by Mr. Brody Lee and he threw it at the feet of negative one. Now, honestly, this was like Shakespeare. This was like emotional tragedy. But then I laughed because 10 looks a bit like Harry Kane. <laughs> the professional football player. I know, I'm sorry. He also left with Rush and its mates. And I tell you, this is the kind of thing we need to be doing on Rampage. You don't always have to have your tippy top stars on the show. Just take your other roster that you do have who are really, really good at what they do and build them with really cool stories such as this. Because now I'm definitely going to tune in next week to see what we are going to do. This is definitely getting it up. Also, we are going for the long term here because one day Negative One is going to grow up and he's going to whip this guy's ass. So I like this episode of Rampage. It was just a little bit different and felt like it had something to offer. Giving it up. Now, please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's episode of Rampage. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come follow us on What Culture WWE and Simon316 on social media. And again, Smackdown ups and downs is up right now. I think you should watch it. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. I will see you next week.